bad boy comedy is in town this week. Mike Marino is bringing his act to Toronto. Affectionately known as New Jersey's bad boy. Get ready for Mike Marino. The wonderful thing about Mike is he's very warm. You know, you get a good feeling from uh, from having been in his company. Mike Marino is currently traveling across the country doing the thing that has made him famous, stand-up comedy. Mike has a universal sense of humor that uh, not only Italians respond to, but all the wasps in the audience. <laughs> I think you're a very, very funny man. Not one of my favorite, but really good. Cool. So, what can you expect to see if you catch his show? I've been told by a lot of my fans who come to see my show that they go home in pain. There is incentive. But. <laughs> What can I say, man? You're, uh, you should run for president. Get ready. You're about to see one of, I think, one of the world's great comics. Love you, Mikey. Get up hard, Marino! I'm very happy to be here. It's nice to be here in Florida. I am from New Jersey. Any Jersey people here? Yeah. Holy crap, that's the entire room. <laughs> Good, because I ain't even a comedian. This is community service. Let me hide with you guys. <laughs> I'm always in a good mood, folks. I don't let anybody bother me. You ever hang around with somebody that's always in a bad mood? They get that constipated face all the time. You just want to say, would you eat a prune and let that out of your ass? You're all stuck up. <laughs> you want to have a good time, you don't know what to do with yourself, do what I do. Smoke a joint or have a cocktail, go inside a Walmart store and just laugh looking at the other people shopping. <laughs> I go to Walmart like it's a movie theater. I bring popcorn. I just look at the people and say to myself, my life ain't that bad. This is fantastic. Come on, you ever go inside Walmart and start buying things you didn't go in there for? I went to Walmart to buy toothpaste. Came out with a lawnmower and a shotgun. I don't even have a lawn. Like it's on sale, I'm getting a mower. And there's weird things going on in stores now. You know, you can see a doctor at a Walmart. Let that marinate, people. A doctor works inside a grocery store. Now you gotta ask yourself a question. Who walks in a Walmart and all of a sudden goes, you know what? I don't feel good. I'm gonna see a doctor here at Walmart. I heard he's in aisle three by the fruit now. Come on, people, how do you see a doctor that works down an aisle? What are his credentials? I even met him, I'm like, how long have you been a doctor? He said, six months. I said, well, what did you do before you were a doctor? He said, I was a cashier. <laughs> because you can meet your own cashier now, can't you, Pete? Wherever you go now, you check out your own items. And when you're checking out your own items, what do they call it? Self-serve, self-scan, self-checkout. Do you like that? No. No, right? They call it self-serve. You know what I call it? Bullshit. Get over here and do your job. I don't work here. I don't work here. How did I walk in the shop up? All of a sudden, I'm an employee with a new career. I didn't apply for this job. I don't know how to do this. So from now on, if I'm going to check out my own items, I want 10% off as an employee. I want an employee discount for doing his job. And I want union wages and benefits. That's right, I want some benefits. What if I hurt myself? What if I get hurt on the job? What if I swipe a 60 pound bag of dog food and I separate my jaw? That would be weird, I don't even have a dog. Why am I buying dog food? I don't want a smock. That's right, I want a smock. I want everybody to know when I work there. And I want a name tag too. I want a name tag. I want to know what's being checked out my items. In case I got a problem with myself and I don't like my service, and I got to go to customer service and complain about myself, how am I supposed to know who I was when I was checking me out if I don't have a name tag? And I want to go on break. Come on, people, how much fun would it be if you were checking out your own items and all of a sudden you just told the next guy in line, I'm my last customer, you got to go around. Exhausted. I've been checking 
out my items for three minutes. <laughs> now I have grapes. I don't know how to do the grapes. Don't tell you what to do. I need a price check. Price check on sale, sir. <laughs> Can I get a price check on sale, sir? How about a manager? Can I get a manager? Maybe I am the manager. Hey, manager! What are you calling me for? Because I need a manager. I'm on break. <laughs> Come on, people. You ever wait in line for a cashier because they don't know what they're doing? <laughs> you got one item. One. So you're thinking you're going to check right out. And she went to the express line, five items or less. And all of a sudden, the guy in front of you takes out a coupon from a store nobody ever heard of. <laughs> and it ruins your entire day, doesn't it? And all you really want to do is punch it in the back of the head. You want to do that? <laughs> oh, I'm the only one. Just me and the people from New Jersey. Nobody else. Just once, I want to go. <laughs> it's from Target. You're in a Walmart. You see the red dot on your coupon? You see the red dot? It's for Target. Why do you think there's a dot? Because it's a Target. This is blue. The Walmart. Because what does this do? Causes a line. Causes a line of people and the line backs up down the aisle. And a manager comes over. And he puts the light on the register next to yours. And he looks at you. <laughs> now you gotta make a decision. Should you stay or should you go? And everybody in the line's looking at you like you're the leader. And like, what are you gonna do? Like, I don't know. Just stick it out. But now that you could be your own cashier, you should have seen the line I caused at my checkout. That's right. I put about a hundred people down the back of the aisle, and they were looking at me like, "What the heck are you doing?" I said, "Shut up! Can't you see I'm with a customer?" <laughs> then I started an argument with myself. Should have seen it. went just like this to me. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Can't use that coupon in here. The coupon is from some other store. He said, Would you shut up? It's me. <laughs> I said, I don't care who you are. I am not going to risk my job <laughs> and career. Walmart. But you came in here with a coupon from another store. He said, you don't even work here. He said, I do right now. I said, then I want to see the manager. He said, how do I know I'm not the manager? I might even be a doctor. <laughs> Stores are getting out of hand these days. I happen to be Italian. Any Italian people in here? Just a few, is that it? <laughs> all these people from New Jersey, there's two Italians? I don't think so. <laughs> Everybody here is from New Jersey, and only two people said they're Italian. That means there's been a lot of murders in Jersey. <laughs> That's all right, I won't rat you out. See, I live in Los Angeles, California. You want to talk about a city where there's no Italians? You should see California. You stand in front of this many people and ask the question, any Italians in the house? You watch the people in the room get confused. <laughs> they just look at you with that Beverly Hills face. <laughs> no, we're not a time. No. Oh my God, no. Oh my, oh my God, no. They're in the mafia. <laughs> As I tell people in California, you go to New Jersey, you stand in front of this many people, you say, hey, the Italians in the house? Go oh, that wise guy in the back of the room going, yeah, you better be funny. <laughs> See, a lot of people don't believe I'm Italian because typically I don't look it. I'm actually light-skinned and I have blue eyes. I'm going to tell you people in this room right now, full-blooded Italian. Both my parents were born in Italy. And I can prove it. <laughs> I'm 50 years old and I still live at home with my mom. <laughs> I'm 
question to me, man. I moved out to Hollywood from New Jersey hoping I would hit the big time. <laughs> Let me go, baby. And I ain't stopping here. I'm playing the Olive Garden next weekend. The Olive Garden. When my family comes from Italy, that's where we take them to eat. Come on, people. Did you see the Olive Garden commercial? When Vito comes from Italy, we take him to the Olive Garden. No, we don't. I ever took my family to the Olive Garden, we'd all get stabbed in the throat right in the middle of dinner. I think we need to involve Italian people in more things in this world. We wouldn't have half the problems we're having in this country, am I right? Yeah. Come on, people. You like what's going on in the White House? You like the way they're running the country? We might be going to war with different parts of the world again. This is a lot of baloney. Nice Italian president from New Jersey for a little bit. How much fun would that be? <laughs> Come on, people. I'll make you paint a picture for you here. I would make a great president. I wouldn't even need four years, three months, straighten out the whole country. No. <laughs> First thing I do, I'll relocate the White House from Washington to Boynton Beach. Who's going to know where we are? <laughs> People in foreign country, where's the White House? Well, it depends on what time of year it is. <laughs> sometimes we're there and sometimes we're not. And I'll tell you right now, we have an Italian president running the country. This war out in Afghanistan be over. You wouldn't know how, but it be over. And then they'd ask our president during a really big news conference, right? They'd be like, Mr. President, you went to the war in Baghdad, can you tell us how you did it? Our boy be on national television, all dressed up in a three-piece suit, but he'd be smoking a cigarette, laughing, going, <laughs> don't worry about it. Yeah, you just go enjoy the gas prices at 32 cents a gallon now, okay? I mean, come on, people, I think it's great we got Osama Bin Laden some time ago. That's fantastic news, right? But if you ask me, that all took too long. He spent too much money trying to make that happen. Because we had an Italian president running the country, no army, no navy, no marine corps. None of that. Two hitmen from Jersey, we're back in 24 hours. And they had found Bin Laden. They had walked right to his cave like he was a hit. Osama! <laughs> they don't. Pull up a rock, I want to talk to you about something. You comfortable? I'm already mad at you, I had to get up early this morning for this visit. You know how far you live from Boynton Beach? <laughs> and I ain't got one of the sun passes. <laughs> Two seconds to the right. Tell you what, Ben, you sit still. Here's what I'm going to do for you. If it ain't, hit him with the bat. <laughs> All right, is he dead? Good. See, war's over. Steal the ropes. Come on, let's get out of here. I suppose that's the way the Italian people deal with their problems, right? With baseball bats and wacky people. That's why out in California, you'll see all these drive-by shootings when you walk on the East Coast. Too many Italians. Italian would never do a drive-by. It's got no class, and they really don't know how. <laughs> that's an Italian doing a drive-by. But hey, move the car in close. We're gonna hit him with the bat. <laughs> Come on, stop fixing your hair. You look good. Grab my shoes. I'm gonna let it in. Folks, I actually just finished my 13th USO comedy tour, right? I went to Afghanistan, Baghdad, Kuwait. Thank you. Thank you very much. I went to go entertain the troops. Now, if you guys remember, when we first went to war out there, France didn't want to help America. Don't remember that? France didn't want to help America. So I told the troops, we had an Italian president running the country, and France didn't want to help America. He had to cut the head off the Statue of Liberty and sent it back to France as a war. Imagine the French ambassador to see the head of the Statue of Liberty just come floating back in on a boat. 
but no body parts, just a head of old twister with an ice cream in the yard. <laughs> my mom still lives in New Jersey. In fact, my mother just turned 84, right? And at 84 years old, my mother calls me up and says, I'm coming to visit you in Hollywood. I said, all right, Mom, coming out to Hollywood. What would you like to do when you get here? I swear my mother goes, I want to go on the family feud with our family. <laughs> Think about that. I mean, you never saw the Italians on the game shows, am I right? They wouldn't let us play. We would beat the crap out of each other during the commercial break. <laughs> Y'all remember the family feud when Richard Dawson was the host? And somebody in the family gave the dumbest answer you ever heard. If that family stood there going, good answer. That's a good answer. It's good answer. I could just imagine my family. Somebody gave a bad answer. National television. You'd see my father go, what the hell is the matter with you, dumbass? That's not going to be up on the board. Don't hit me. All right, stop fighting, everybody. Come on, get up. We're going to win. Huh? No, no, we're going to win. I know somebody. <laughs> and then you'd see like a little cash bribe, a little money exchange would go down like this. Mr. Dawson, do you want to come over to the family and we'll talk about something? <laughs> now listen, we got off to a bad start, me and you, and what happened? Here's what we're going to do. Here's an extra $200 cash. Now you put this in your pocket, that's going to be for you. <laughs> Now you ask my mother the question again, she wasn't ready. <laughs> ask her the question again, she wasn't ready. Let me tell you something, Mr. Dawson, I don't know who you think you are, but if you ever kiss my wife on the mouth like that again, I'm gonna slap you right back in the Hogan's Heroes, you understand that? <laughs> you know what, the family's a little upset with you. Go to the commercial break. Are we at the break? Good. Vene! <laughs> Hit him with the bat. Come on, people, you want to talk about discrimination? Whenever the Italians go on television or in the movies, what do they make us play? <laughs> Gangsters, right? Mafia. That's discrimination against the Italians. And all I ever wanted to play was a mob boss in a mob movie. And I've been in two of them. And in both of them, I was the Irish cop that got whacked in the first 67. <laughs> Italians on better shows. You guys remember the movie The Sixth Sense? That would have been a good place for an Italian actor, because then that little boy would have been considered a rat. Think about it. He would have went, I see dead people. He would have said, shut up. You don't see nobody. <laughs> and actually, you all know the craziest trials come out of California, don't they, folks? Come on now. O.J. Simpson. Lacey Peterson, Robert Blake. It's all very California, don't you think? As I tell people out there all the time, they ever killed anybody from New Jersey? Never would have made it to a trial. <laughs> don't make me paint a picture for you here, folks. Imagine O.J. Simpson killed somebody from an Italian family. Yeah. That judge would have asked the family a long time ago, does the family wish to press charges? <laughs> family would have went, <laughs> no. no. Let them go. We forgive them. <laughs> Better yet, Judge, we'll drive them home from here. Today, <laughs> I'm Mike Marino. Thank you, everybody.